to destroy. Once he's dead, we get the crown item, and now we actually have all the items we need to go into the last rooms of the game. Now, as you can see, by heading to the left, we're back on the second floor, so we're gonna have to travel back up, go through the grating all the way to the right, through the boss chamber, and back to the third floor. Now, we're actually going to enter this grate right over here. Climb all the way up. And there we go. Inside here is a skeletal dragon. Very similar to all the bosses we've already faced, but this one is the final ones of these types of bosses. The last boss of the game, the actual final enemy of the game, is just a normal style enemy. You're not fighting him in a big boss chamber like this. Now his pattern's the same as all the other ones. His projectiles and him do a lot of damage if you land into him. So avoid as much as possible and use the float ability to your advantage. After you deal enough damage to him, you'll defeat him, get our last of the crystals, and exit out. Now you'll be on the top floor. There's only one door to go into. Now this is where things get tricky. The boss is located in the top of this room. But there's four rooms here, all of which are different colored backgrounds. However, they're all the same exact setup and room. There's only one real boss. I'm not sure exactly which one he's always in. Usually, I just start with this one, and then start heading through the other rooms if this one isn't the correct one. Some say it's this one always, some say it's the blue room, and I've had hit or miss chances with both. So I'm not positive on how this thing works. However, this is our final boss of the game. You can only hit him when he opens up the cape to shoot the cannonballs at you, or whatever you want to call his projectile. Once he opens up, you can then do a lot of damage to him. You also have to deal with the Grim Reapers. You can defeat them if you want, but sometimes it's best just to go ahead and defeat him as quick as possible without taking the extra time. As you can see, this was the real one. The screen flashes a few times, and then we go to another chamber altogether. We see the bubbles kind of converge there. The princess has been saved, and we have saved Castle Garland. Now, this was an early NES game. This came out in 87, so the technology wasn't fully known yet. I still think it's a pretty solid NES puzzle game, and you see it more of a puzzle game than a platformer, and ends up being pretty fun. Now, unfortunately, they didn't make any direct sequels to this for the NES. There was a Japan-only sequel that was much more of a traditional platformer, and it's actually uh, currently on the Wii Virtual Console under SNES for the imports, I'm pretty sure. And that's going to wrap up another edition of Play It Through. I'd like to thank you for watching, and of course, I hope you enjoyed. <laughs>